heart rate up a little bit, which is probably good because actually cancer is not the number one killer of women breast cancer. Heart disease is. Dr. Caitlin Geisler is here from the Seat Heart Institute to talk to us about exactly that. Thank you for being here this morning. Thanks for having me. Sure. We talked just a minute ago and there's a misconception about what actually kills women and it's heart disease and That's have, you, right. have you made strides over the years or have you seen an increase of, of deaths related to heart disease? There have been improvements in the death rates however the death rates for women haven't kept up with the improvements that we've made for men. Yeah. So that's what is prompting our efforts. And you were saying it's something that we don't really think about or pay attention to. We just expect that their heart is going to work and we'll keep going. That's right. Yeah. We don't really have time to stop and think about our hearts and, yeah. and prevention. So it's important that we keep it in mind. And about what age are, should women pay attention to that? Women tend to develop heart disease a little bit later in life, about 10 years after men do. Yeah. But, but definitely beginning in their 50s, we need to start focusing on screening and prevention for sure. And you guys have a new program now at the Seat Heart Institute. Talk about that a little bit. That's right. We know that a lot of women use their gynecologist as their primary care physician. So we're actually collaborating with gynecologists in the community to make sure that part of the Well Woman exam is also screening for heart disease and we're using a screening tool to open up communication and education about heart disease and prevention. And just talk about um, just the the risk factors. Is it Does it have anything to do with heredit, uh, your family history? Is it hereditary? Absolutely. Yeah. Family history plays a large role but because it's the number one killer of women more than all cancers combined, it's chances are that most women will have it no matter what their family history is. Wow. And so blood pressure, cholesterol, um, weight are all important risk factors as well. And I guess working out and exercise has a lot to do with it as well. Absolutely. And talk about these things here too. These are the questions that women should be asking of their doctor. And these are the things that you guys pay attention to when you're diagnosing it. That's right. We want women to know their numbers. So that means you need to know what your blood pressure is. What is your cholesterol? What's your BMI or your body mass index? That's an, a weight index. Yeah. And what's your fasting glucose? And those are numbers that you should know and then improve on if needed. How important are those all of those things together? Is one more important than the other or they all coincide? That's a good question. We know that each one is an important risk factor individually. If you have more than one of those then that also increases your risk even more. Yeah. Have you guys gotten busier over just the year or the time of year? Does it make a difference for you? Yeah, it, it ebbs and flows, certainly. Yeah. I think when the weather is nice, people feel better, but mm -hmm. over the holidays, people tend to overindulge, and that can precipitate heart disease. Yeah, so just don't eat a lot of food. That's right. <laughs> and exercise, and go see Dr. Uh, Giesler. You can see her and make an appointment at seatonheart.com slash women, and she is at the Seaton Heart.